So I want to share with you some quick tips on how to make vinaigrettes, but there's a few things that you need to know first. And it's so simple to make your own vinaigrette, but with a few easy tips, you'll be able to make it much safer and easier, be able to leave vinaigrettes out on the counter. Okay, first of all, let's start with the garlic. I love garlic. you got to have garlic in vinaigrette. I like to buy, well, I buy whole cloves and then peel them myself. If you're going to buy garlic that's already done, buy it out of the refrigerated section in the produce because the jarred garlic that you buy that's already minced, it doesn't have any flavor. It's really horrid stuff, and I don't know what kind of oil they put it in, but it doesn't really work all that well. So at least get the fresh peeled garlic cloves out of the produce section. Then what you want to do, there's a couple ways of chopping or should I say adding garlic to a vinaigrette. Okay, so you could put everything in a beaker, use an immersion blender, and then puree it up. Vinegar oil works out great. Add Dijon mustard and a little sugar. That acts as an emulsifier. Or you can use a plain grater and grate it right into the bowl or you can mince it, or a garlic press. The finer the garlic, the more flavor you get from the garlic. Then the last important thing, well, almost the last important thing that you want to know, is when you're making a vinaigrette, put the garlic in the bowl and then add acid to the garlic. By adding the acid by way of either lemon juice or whatever kind of vinegar you're going to use then you're sort of pickling the garlic and you then by doing that you can keep it out unrefrigerated if you get oil on the garlic first then the, the vinegar won't seep into the pieces of garlic and act as a preservative so for whatever that's worth and then if I'm going to make vinaigrette and keep it for any length of time and I want to use herbs like if I make a Greek vinaigrette which I love good on sandwiches good on salad good marinade for chicken what have you I like to use dried thyme in that or dried oregano in that because um, the dried you know they when once it's dried they usually put it through a process where if you use fresh it would have to go in in the beginning with the vinegar to kill anything off by way of the vinegar you're a lot safer if you want to keep it out on the counter for any length of time using a dried and it will rehydrate in the liquid that you're adding but add that to the vinegar first and then add the oil so anyway then the other tip is when you're making dressings you always want to taste the dressing with lettuce as the vehicle because you're making salad dressing. If you're going to use the dressing for something else, say a chicken marinade, well you can't really taste raw chicken, that doesn't work, but a lot of the dressings work really good on potato salad, they work good on rice, they work really well on pasta, but if you make the base and taste it with a piece of lettuce, then you know at least how uh, strong it is, how not strong it is, and what you might want to add to it. And then the other uh, thing that I might add is after tasting the salad on a piece of lettuce, then pour it into your jar, but don't pour it into, see if you have a jar that doesn't have a metal lid on it. If you keep it for any length of time in a jar that has a metal cap, it will start to pick up the flavor of the metal cap. The vinegar will corrode the metal cap, and it's really not too tasty, you know, the metal flavor that seeps into it. So those are some easy, basic, quick tips. Then as far as the vinaigrettes got, they're endless, but I'm gonna show you a couple of my easiest favorite ones that you can play around with, add and subtract whatever kind of ingredients you want. Now the easiest, easiest one that I just love, and so many other people, I make it for people all the time, is my Bragg's Lemon and Olive Oil. So I already have some cut um, romaine. This one you don't even have to make in advance because it's so easy. So I spray the greens with the Bragg's. I always like to add my vinegar first and then the oil so that the oil doesn't coat the lettuce greens and the vinegar 
then doesn't you don't get the full flavor of the vinegar but anyway so we've got the brags on there now I'm going to add a little squeeze of fresh lemon juice of not quite a half a lemon when you're buying lemons I like to buy them small and old older I should say because they usually have a little more juice and then some extra virgin olive oil on top. I'm not going to add salt to this because the Braggs has a little bit of salt that's it's so not needed. And then some fresh cracked pepper. And that's it. And I'll tell you what, this is a really good salad dressing. So the oil on top and then toss just before you want to serve it. And if you use stronger greens like the kale, um, some have Brussels sprouts in them, some have little broccoli ends in them, whatever. It holds really well and the salad is really good the next day. So we'll see how we did. Mm, great, marvelous. Basic ratio that I like is three to one. In other words, three parts extra virgin olive oil or you know some kind of oil depending on the dressing and one part acid, whether that be a combination of vinegars or lemon or the lemon and brags. But anyway, this was about three to one. So that's really good. Easy. The brags is also, brags lemon and olive oil is also good on vegetables. So now that that's done, then what I'll do is show you my other methods of making dressing. I'll do some in a beaker and I'll do some in a bowl and show you how I do the garlic. For all the vinaigrettes you want to use three parts oil to one part vinegar or you might just like two parts oil but anyway balsamic vinegar, red wine vinegar, lemon juice equal parts of all, two to three garlic cloves. I really like them through the press and then add some fresh cracked pepper and some salt and some extra virgin olive oil and whisk really well to blend. It will separate if you let it set out on your counter but put it in a jar that you can shake it well for use the next time. French style vinaigrette. I do this in a beaker just for a little variety because of the mustard. Dijon mustard, fresh garlic, a little bit of red wine vinegar, a little bit of balsamic vinegar, some fresh cracked pepper, some salt, a little bit of thyme, dried thyme, extra virgin olive oil, and then you want to blend this really well with the immersion blender. Taste adjust with a little bit of salt if necessary and add a little bit of fresh lemon juice and this is a really good vinaigrette for salad niçoise, for potatoes, for rice. It's a great vinaigrette. Now for the fruit style vinaigrette, I do this with the immersion blender too, but you can hand whisk this and then use a garlic press. Fresh peeled garlic cloves, fresh cracked pepper, fresh lemon juice, and then add a little bit of salt, some extra virgin olive oil, and blend well. After it's blended well, then add some dried oregano and the reason I'm adding that later is so that the oregano does not get pureed into the dressing and then just whisk all that together and that is a really good Greek style dressing I especially love it on sandwiches instead of mayonnaise it's excellent good marinade for chicken too and then balsamic vinaigrette is excellent so it's balsamic vinegar, two to three tablespoons of sugar, fresh cracked pepper, a little bit of salt, two to three garlic cloves through the press because I love the garlic in that, 
and then extra virgin olive oil whisk well to combine and that's a really good all-purpose salad dressing if you have a little bit of a sweet tooth it's awesome As you can see with a few simple ingredients you can make yourself some really wonderful vinaigrettes so much better than anything you're gonna buy in the store because as vinaigrette is sort of a European kind of a thing you use good ingredients like the extra virgin olive oil which so many Europeans pride themselves on and come up with variations a little Italian a little French style a uh, little Greek style and so and they're so versatile to use on so many other things so I hope you enjoyed this episode. Hope to see you on the next one. And do try these. They're really good. I think you'll like them as much as I do. Thanks for joining me. Mm -hmm.